Join us as we journey into the unknown in the week of April 2nd, 2018's Kickstarter Pickstarters. Uprising, the dystopian universe RPG, is the brand new RPG on Kickstarter now from Indie Boards and Cards along with Evil Hat, uh, the guys behind Fate, which this game is based in that system, although with some changes. And this is actually set in the same universe as the dystopian universe, which is the very original title for Indie Board and Cards series, which includes The Resistance and Coup. So that's a, that's a pretty cool thing. This is the first time they're going to actually have kind of a story based game set in that world. Uh, this is an RPG, as I said, based in that fate system. Some of the things that separated a little bit, uh, it changes up the action system a little bit from that game. It has one interesting, very interesting factor in that you can keep secrets from each other. There's actually a built-in system for characters to have their own secrets, as well as personal goals uh, that they kind of, that's kind of your leveling system in a way. When you reach those goals, you gain more advantages. So it sounds like there's more reasons for players working together to hide from things from each other and potentially maybe backstab each other, which sounds like, I know uh, from our experience, could be dangerous. <laughs> it could be a bad thing, I don't it know. It could be, but I think part of the reason some people go into those games ex not expecting that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. But I like this because if you've played Coup or The Resistance, that's all about hiding information. Yeah, very much so. <laughs> so an RPG where that's a strong element of it, makes it fit perfectly in the, while not well-named, <laughs> but interesting universe. And uh, they're going to have some pre-made character sheets in there for people from those games. I don't know exactly who's in there, but I'm really hoping for the Duke. Oh, yeah, that's a favorite in our household. But I don't think, because I think maybe there's different variants. I don't know how much, how in-depth it goes, but I think you're playing as the resistance in the game. Well, that's, I'm really curious to see, uh, I know you were actually very interested in it, if you could actually maybe make a campaign of like, you're gonna be playing as not the resistance and one of you is, like you can even do a flip or. Yeah, I mean, I would be shocked if they didn't include something like that. It seems like it just is made yeah. for this game. I mean, this is something we I would like to expect from a lot of the board game companies that have been developed in the universes. I mean, we've said it a lot with Match at the Gathering, which they sort of do, but I would love them to make that extra, like, nice book. Netrunner. Uh, Netrunner is one we said a lot, which is very close to this. Uh, Sentinels mm -hmm. of the Universe are doing that, which is nice. So mm -hmm. I'm, glad, I'm glad to see someone who actually who's, gives a name to the universe taking it up and make, giving you the tools to really dive into the universe. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. So uh, if you want this one, it's $29 for the digital, $39 for the physical copy. And if you back it, you actually get their uh, sort of beta test version PDF right away. So if you really want to try it out and see how it plays, just back it, and if you don't like it, back out. <laughs> well, also, and if you plan to make the campaign, then at least you have a general idea, and maybe you can actually have your story almost finalized by the time you get the book. There so you, you go. Go right in. Get started early. <laughs> Drafted Dragon is a fun little game by William Ritter and Tanner Johnson. It is about drafting cards to make j these crazy, hilarious dragons. You'll be trying to make sure you get all the parts, uh, you want to make sure you get wings, or if you leave them open, you lose points. You'll also be drafting abilities, so like getting a longer dragon than anyone else and stuff. It was a small game. It's only $15, which is why I liked it. It seemed like a very cute, fun thing that you could just take out, not too long, just make these crazy little dragons. And uh, this reminded me, and I'm, I know it must have reminded you as well, mm -hmm. of those old books back in the day where you had different flaps of different yes, creatures. Yes, yes, absolutely. <laughs> you, the, just, you make some weird dinosaur, like <laughs> it's the head of a mastodon, the body of a T-Rex, and you know. Yeah, and this, but it has like a really cute art style. Yeah, too. no, it's right. really adorable. Like I said, only $15. Definitely uh, give it a shot. Draft a dragon. <laughs> Dreamscape is our next game. It comes from Silex. And this is a game in which everyone will be dreaming of things. It is sort of an abstract looking game where you're trying to collect dream shards, which take the form of round colored tokens. And they're on the board in different locations. And depending on how you move your little meeple around, you're going to be collecting them to your own personal board. And your space is a round circle with multiple circles inside of that circle, which fit those tokens. And what's kind of neat about it is, you're going to be trying to achieve these cards that you're going to get by actually building what you see on that card 
in your space. So sort of uh, made me think of Meeple Circus, which came out recently, only you're not trying to mimic things uh, vertically. There's no dexterity involved, but it'll have different co certain colors of different uh, tokens arranged in a certain way, and you're trying to collect them to build that pattern on your board. And it could be something kind of abstract, or it might be like a river, so there's blue tokens, and then a brown token like to show a bridge going across it, uh, and you get points depending on how well you complete those versus everybody else. And there's more going on in there with different powers that you have and ways that you move around the board and nightmares that come out. And if you get a nightmare token, that's bad because it'll mess you up in your game. Mm. Uh, so it seemed like a, a very well thought out concept. The mechanics seem unique and sound. And I thought yeah, it looked cool. We were talking on it. It's like, there's a lot of dream games recently. It's, I think dreams are the new zombies. <laughs> uh, there was dream catchers. There's, uh, what's the one from... Um, Ah, uh, Renegade, I, I want to say. Yeah, I can't, I'll yeah. pop it up on the screen. Yeah. There's, a, there's another dream game. They're everywhere. Yeah, anyway, this one goes for $55. If you like dreams, dream it up. And of course, while playing, make sure to spin the token, because if it keeps spinning, you're in someone else's dream. From the mind of Craig Stern comes True Messiah. In this game, apparently there was this device made that sort of Made people's beliefs actually come true. And of course, everyone has different beliefs and thoughts in humanity, which fractured the world, causing an apocalypse. You are playing as a messiah, pretty much leading your cult into what is the true belief system. And of course, fighting the other ones along the way. Uh, there are four different cults that come with the base. And you'll have your own giant piece on the board, and you'll be moving workers around. And what's inter one of the things that's interesting is if you want to like build a temple or something, they don't just build it there. They have to survive one round in order to build the temple. Kind of a little uh, like King of the Hill or uh, like area control. Right. So you have wave. to think, you can't just, I'm going to build there. You're like, can I build there without being interrupted? Of course, cultists can then attack too, or they can pray for miracles. And then after full rounds, you'll actually be bidding for more miracles to add to your deck. So it's this whole back and forth, and you, each deck's going to be different what cards come out, what miracles you can get, and having to plan in advance, which I thought was a little cool. And, of course, post apocalypse is always a very common theme in board games. It sounds like a very interesting premise. I really like that. Yeah. The, the Believe device. <laughs> yeah, that, when you heard, you're like, what the hell? <laughs> yeah, I want that Believe thing to happen. <laughs> I love Believies. Uh, and, uh, yeah, and it goes for $55. This is, you know, much meatier game. Like I said, a lot of cards. Huge little your messiah that you play as, so they can sort of like titans that can just go into a battle like, yeah, I'm just clearing this square. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, for, uh, if you haven't guessed, first one to defeat all other cultists wins. So definitely something worth checking out uh, if you are a true believer. Ultima Games presents Unbroken, a solo-only fantasy game in which you are the survivor of an expedition and you've got to defeat monsters in order to survive and win the day. Uh, this is a solo game, which is something that uh, we are into when those solo games come out. I always think it's really interesting and fun to see when something is specifically designed for that. And uh, Yeah, it doesn't make you feel guilty when uh, you just play it by yourself. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You can get it to the table without anybody else <laughs> needing to be involved. Uh, in this one in particular, unlike most of these games that I feel like are often all about dice rolling, uh, this one does have some dice rolling in it, but a lot of it is resource management. Uh, you're going to be drawing encounter cards and tr gathering resources before you are ready to battle uh, one of four monsters you need to defeat to win. And you don't have a health... Uh, track per se. Your health is actually one of your resource types that you will need to expend. So there's another uh, back and forth of what can I risk spending versus the monster hurting me for it. Seemed very interesting and the I gotta say the reviews they posted on the Kickstarter page kind of swayed me. I think it was Rado runs through said that this is in his top five, maybe top three solo games ever, which is pretty strong praise, and that, that made me really uh, take a closer look at it. Yeah, this is one we actually both first saw. Yeah. And we're excited about, because <laughs> one thing in single player. And I think the idea of a resource managing survive shines a lot in the single player. I know one of the games we've talked about, and we're, I'll say why this one stands out, uh, like for Seven Continent, which is a survival game, works very well as a single player method. What's really great about this one is it's not days worth of gameplay you know you can 
Yeah, it's uh, like 20 minutes or so, right. they said. Yeah, it's really nice when you have those uh, solo games that are just quick. You can put it down, take it out, put it away, et cetera, et cetera. So if that sounds good to you, then Unbroken goes for $29 on Kickstarter right now. If you're a longtime fan of Roll for Crit, you've known that we've been doing this D&D campaign, which is currently on hiatus. But one of the things I enjoyed both in game as my character and myself was actually have a little journal in which I could write notes and do maps and some of the monsters. Well, this Kickstarter is there to help people like me who like doing that stuff. This is Hero, the Adventurer's Journal. This is a journal actually designed for RPGs. It actually has 200 pages designed for three characters to be put in there where you can draw your character, some stats if you'd like, but it's kept general so it isn't like, oh, obviously D&D or Pathfinder. There's a page for you like a nemesis for finding a maps and stuff. I really like it. In fact, I think it's one of those things you should sort of think about doing for a lot of RPGs because it forces you to try to take notes or remember characters' names because sometimes for both the dungeon master and the player, you know, putting, remembering that one NPC's name is a good thing because then I could really reward them like, oh, yes, I remember you're this person. <laughs> Drawing a map, it feels like you're more connected remembering like the dungeon and make left and right. It also allows the dungeon master knowing that if their players are doing it, they actually give them complex dungeons, not just, there's a corridor. Yeah, it's really cool to have like an actual physical kind of souvenir of the adventure. Mm -hmm. This is something I actually had a while ago kind of looked around on Amazon and stuff to see like what kind of role-playing game journals exist. Mm -hmm. And there are some, but usually they're either just blank pages with a right. cover. Which is, mine is literally just blank. Yeah, so, and so, but this sounds like it actually is has cool, so you well can thought jump out to, things. Yeah, one of the things I know I didn't mind to help spice it up a little bit was like you, for example, would give us like we played a card game with someone with a gave us cards, and I actually taped the card in there as if like you know you you pinned yeah, in yeah, and stuff, yeah. which is cool. The one thing I do notice in this, which is a bit of an issue for some for some people, mm. is they there's a sheet for you to draw your character. They actually put a ma like a mannequin for you to draw over, so you can be like, okay, this is where the head should be to help with proportions, mm. which is great for a lot of people who may not who have a little, have a little trouble drawing, not speaking, <laughs> like knowing like okay, the hand should be here maybe. If I can put the arm up here. Problem is, it's about an average human size. So if you're drawing a dwarf or a halfling, it's a little, mm. a little bit difficult. A little uh, specious, maybe, <laughs> yeah. this, this journal. <laughs> but still, I think a great idea. Uh, it's definitely something you should even talk about with your D&D group, that maybe you should keep notes, or at least one person have a journal. It forces you to get, I think, a bit more into the game. It's something you can do on your off turns without having to sort of leave the game instead of being on your phone, which I know... It can drive many a uh, DM mad. <laughs> so this does go for $25 for one book. You can actually buy multiple books, which is a great thing, because as we said, giving it to multiple players, or one for the DM and maybe one for his player, as well as comes in English and Italian, which is also nice. In fact, when you look at the Kickstarter, you may notice it going back and forth between the two languages. Hey, who doesn't love Italy? <laughs> yeah, I'm ending on that. <laughs> we had a tough time narrowing down those Kickstarter picks this week. There were a lot of good ones. If you've got any that we missed, leave them in the comments. Let us know. I know there's some I know that are coming out next week that I'm looking forward to talk about. Mm, little there, tease. There's always more to come. That's right. Uh, until that time comes, this has been your Kickstarter, Pickstarter, that's what it's called, for April 2nd. I'm Jonathan. I'm Will. And this is Roll for Crit. Make sure you like and subscribe and leave your comments down below. Before it's too late!